Good evening and welcome to our midweek Lenten service. I just want to give you a couple of directions before we begin. We are using the setting by Marty Haugen of Holden Evening Prayer. And so we will have some parts um, and then we will have a interlude where we have our scripture. There will be a reflection that was written by Pastor Deborah, and Pastor Deborah is um, at Yellow Medicine tonight. And then um, after the reflection, uh, Peg Hagland is our scripture reader tonight. She is going to read our scripture again so that we hear it once, have a reflection, um, and then we hear the scripture again. Then we will have our offering while Lynn plays some music for us. And then we will finish up the rest of the Holden Evening prayer service and have our final blessing. So let us begin with prayer. In the Holy Trinity, you show us belonging and inclusion in perfect balance. Made in your image, we long for community yet we retreat into rigid categories and binary thinking, as if excluding others could protect us from being left out. In you, there is no inside or outside. In you, there is no us or them. Embolden and equip us to work towards this expansive kinship, which is only possible through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So now let us begin with hold an evening prayer. We thank Elaine and Dan for singing.
Come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The scripture reading tonight is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. 
So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him read Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shear. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Let us join in a moment of silent prayer. We continue looking at how the Spirit is altering us. Tonight we consider how we are altered on the edge of belonging. So where do you belong? We live and connect in many ways. There are places where we, where we are not to go. There are cultural rules of who is acceptable and who is not. We have housing for those over 55. We set rules about who can or cannot be in certain places, like bars or in theaters showing PG-13 movies. Where do you feel comfortable? And where do you not go? Who is acceptable and who makes you nervous when you meet them? For the Ethiopian eunuch, he is not welcome at the synagogue because he is a eunuch. Yet as the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia, he is powerful, well-educated, and probably a wealthy man. He is on the edge of belonging. But then, what happens? How does the spirit alter his life? Philip comes to him as the eunuch is returning home. He is studying scripture, and Philip interprets it for him. Philip is altered and accepts this eunuch. The eunuch is no longer on the edge of belonging. With Christ, he belongs. He is welcome to be baptized. He is welcome to join the community of Jesus Christ. Holy baptism alters us from the edges to belonging, just as it altered the eunuch. Belonging to the full family of God, we are part of all the world. We have the chance to welcome all sorts of those who are on the edge of belonging in our culture. We know what it was like for the eunuch to be on the edge of belonging. May we be altered to proclaim Christ and share Christ's love as Philip did. Amen. And now let us listen while Peg reads our scripture from Acts once more. 
Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and he was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is it to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azadus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now we will take our evening offering. Now we will continue with Hold an Evening Prayer, the Annunciation. An angel went from 
God, to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, the highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus. The chosen one that God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God create a Go in peace.